Hi there, this is Imaneo. Welcome to my channel. Uh, in this video, we continue to have an overview over the UI challenges that I already implemented in the Flutter for Fun web blog. As you might know, it is a blog that I created around four years ago and I used to implement some UI UX challenges in form of blog posts. Now I decided to continue it as some videos in my YouTube channel. But before that, we needed to take an overview over the nine UI challenges that I already implemented and we continued the challenges in the YouTube channel. So in the next video, in the UI challenge 10, we will create a new UI challenge and all of it is in the video that I will publish. So today I'm going to take a look at the UI challenge 7, 8 and 9. So let's get started with the UI challenge 7. Okay, this is a panel or something like that that shows four simple charts. So uh, this design is by someone called Rehanul Islam or something like that. Uh, I will put the Uplabs link into the description. You can take a look. It has two different uh, dark mode and light modes. So we are going to implement both of them. And to do that, at first we need to have an structure to show four parts of the screen and uh, at first I created a grid view and put four uh, card widgets inside it. The point is that here we say that cross axis count is two. So in all the cases, we only have two rows. So suppose that we have this narrow screen. So in this case, we would like to have only one column because uh, it is too small to have two columns. Uh, to fix this issue, we use some logic like this. So we get the max width of the uh, widget using the layout builder. So in the layout builder, you will have access to the constraints. So this is the constraints that apply to the widget that you are creating. For example, here, the grid view. And we say that if max width is less than 800, it should be one. Otherwise, it should be two. So as a result, you see that uh, when we resize the screen, uh, it changes into two column grid view and otherwise it is a one column grid view. Okay, and in the next step, we are going to put the charts inside the cards that we already created. So uh, we have the layout. Now we need to uh, replace the cards with some chart widgets. To do that, I'm going to use FL chart package. So if you don't know what FL chart is, you can watch the video. Uh, I explained it. It is a develop that uh, maintained by me and it supports line chart, bar chart, pie chart, scatter chart, and radar chart for now. So we used uh, FL chart version 040.2. This is the old version. I mean, if you look at the code you see that uh, it is somehow old but the structure is the same so about 10 percent of the code is changed so i'm going to cover it uh, it's too simple so you have a bar chart widget which accepts a bar chart data inside the bar chart data you can pass a lot of properties to customize the chart such as data bar colors, I don't know, touch behavior, and everything that you need for drawing a chart. And this is a sample. For example, we have the bar chart widget. By the way, you can use this widget inside your Flutter app. It is just like other widgets. You can combine it with other widgets that you already have. And in the bar chart data, we have one property called bar groups. So in the definition, each bar group is a group of some bars. So it can only contain one bar or multiple charts. So this way we can group some uh, bars together. But in our sample, we have a lot of groups which only have one bar inside. it. So to do that, we have around 12 items, I think. And in the bar roads, which is the actual bars we only have one single bar road inside in each group so as a result you see this chart in the titles data uh, this is a property which is responsible to handle the titles here and we say that okay we don't want to have the uh, right titles and also the top titles so show titles are false so uh, in here and here you don't see anything 
and in the next step we want to uh, use uh, months names instead of uh, 0 to 11 and to do that we can have a mapper to map the value to a string so in the bottom titles we can have a site titles and in the get title we can have uh, we, we can return a string based on the x value so x value is these numbers you can map these numbers into a text so in the current FL chart version, uh, I will show you we are in version 0.66.2. So in this version, instead of a text, we accept a widget. So in this function, in the newer version of FL chart, you can return a widget. For example, here, instead of a static text, you can uh, return uh, an actual text widget or a button or an icon or whatever you want yeah for example i can show you in the fl chart samples uh, yeah for example here these are some titles that i used icon instead of the text also i think it is here yeah here uh, you see that I used some animations for the icon that we show instead of text because uh, it's a widget so you can do animations and yeah so in the newer version you can use widget oh this is a confetti if you don't know what is it you can watch this video I explained it basically this is my subscribers count and whenever you see a confetti it means that someone subscribed my channel so uh, suppose that I'm in the middle of doing something, but suddenly I see that, oh, someone subscribed and it makes me happy. So if you want to make me happy, please subscribe right now. And yeah, so in the next step, we have this result. Yeah, as you see, this is responsive. When you have less space, you can see less uh, count of uh, titles for example here you only see three titles but here you see too many items as a title here it is responsive but you can uh, hard code a value for example here we want to say that okay we want to have 20 as interval for the left titles no matter how much space do you have so this way you can restrict it to something like 20 and in the next step we hide the grid data so as you see in the background we have some dashed lines so this is the grid data of the chart we hide it and also we hide the border data so as you see we have a border and you can hide it using border data is fl border data which show equals false property and as a result we have this shape by the way we changed the color of each bar road so we created a function to return a bar chart road data instead of uh, the static bar chart road data that we already created because we want to customize it and yes here we created a function and this function accepts a double y which is the height of each bar chart and we say that okay in bar chart road data y equals y colors are this orange colors so if you pass multiple colors inside here it's gradient between the colors but if you pass only one color it only draws the solid color by the way i think we changed this behavior in the newer fl chart versions and here we have width this is the width of or stroke width of our charts here we have border radius of circular 2 as you see we have radius here and we have an interesting thing here it is backdraw road data so what is this this is the line that you see behind the bar this bar color that starts from here to here i don't know can you see it or not but i can zoom here yeah as you see it is here behind the uh, yellow lines so we say that okay show it please y is 140 for all of them and the color is something like this and yeah this chart is finished and uh, here we copy pasted the 
previous chart and we change this function which returns a road data so we change the color we change the width and uh, as a result we have these narrow lines which are blue instead of these thick lines that are uh, orange and in the next step we created a line chart so basically the structure is the same previously we had bar chart and bar chart data here we have line chart and line chart data so it works like this in all the charts i mean if you have a pie chart if you have a radar chart all of them follow the same structure so you have chart and also you have the chart data so here you can pass a list of line bars data and each line bar data is an actual line in your line chart so you can stack a lot of lines into a one line chart and here we only have one so this is a one uh, line chart for example here if you take a look for example here we have three lines uh, or line bar data here we only have one or here we have two so yeah, you can have multiple line chart bar data and in the S parts you define the data. So you say that, okay, in X zero and Y 24, which means here it starts from this point and here you say, okay, continue on X one, Y 24. So it is here. You say that, okay, X two, Y is 40. So it is here and this way you define the data that your line is showing and here you define the titles data for example just like the previous chart we have only bottom and left sides for titles and we hide the grid data and border data so you see the bare chart and in the next step we want to change the color of our line so you can override the colors property it gradients from this color to this color and also we hide the dot data so if you hide you don't see this dot data anymore and yeah as a result we have this beautiful line chart oh one thing that i forgot to mention is this property so if you set is curved to true your line chart is not it doesn't have hard edge anymore it is a smooth and uh, it's a curved uh, line chart yeah also you have this variable curve smoothness uh, you can change it to have a better looking chart and here we have a gradient color behind or below the chart so it is implemented by this code we have a below bar data which accepts a bar area data and here we say that okay please show it and colors are these two colors so as you remember it gradients between these colors so it starts with opacity of 10 in hex format and it ends with opacity of zero so as you see it started from this color to the invisible color and here in the next step here we have two line charts so here we stack them as you see here we have line chart bar data one line chart bar data two they have different colors they have different values and it's like this and for both of them we used is curved to false to have hard edges of the line chart okay and in the next step we need to implement the legends so uh, it's here we have a row we have a container with a rounded radius we have a text again we have a container text and yeah it's simple we used some uh, basic flutter widgets here and in the next step we implemented dark theme and light theme so we used a change notifier here we have a property called is dark we can change it in our uh, widget tree and in our material app we used a consumer we wrapped our material app with a, a consumer to uh, use the data so as a result you see that we combined everything together we use the actual colors here and you can change the theme using this switch button so as you see it is the light mode and other one is the dark mode So you can take a look at the source code here. 
uh, again this source code is old it is for three years ago and i would be happy if you contribute to the project and migrate it to be able to use a newer flutter version and newer fl chart version so this way we can have it uh, in the web somewhere then we can have a live sample or, or a live demo of this then we can interact with it and yeah let's get back to the other UI challenge. The next one is UI challenge eight. Oh, by the way, it is not a UI challenge. It's just a challenge because the point of this challenge is encryption or encrypted images in Flutter. So basically this was a challenge that I had in my personal project. So I wanted to store some encrypted images into the disk into the local disk and i wanted to show them in my flutter app yeah it was not a normal for example png or jpg file it was a file that is encrypted with typical encryption algorithms and yeah so this was the challenge uh, suppose that i have this abstract decrypt and encrypt function so uh, you pass a uh, byte array as a key so you int 8 list is just a byte array it's a list of integers so this is a low level uh, data structure we use because most of the encryption libraries uh, using this one and this is more efficient than using a list of integer because uh, this data type is uh, low level and it is actually a chunk of data and as an input here we have a uint 8 list of key we have uint 8 list of raw data so this is the data of your raw image your png image and when you encrypt it returns a new byte array which is the encrypted data so you can store it as a file into the disk and using the decrypt function you have the key you have the encrypted data and as a result it returns a byte array of the raw data so uh, yes these are two methods that you can encrypt and decrypt your image file and uh, okay so suppose that you receive a list of or somehow you have a list of images and you need to encrypt them to store it in the local storage and then you want to show it in your flutter application as an image to do that i had some uh, basic ideas at first, I wanted to load them into my block or any asset management that I have and keep the list of byte arrays that I have. For example, suppose that I want to show 10 images in the page so I can read 10 byte arrays as an encrypted images and then I can decrypt them and have a list of raw data and then I can show them using image.bytes, I think into flutter mm. uh, yeah image.memory so uh, we have a function called image.memory which you can pass a list of or uh, uint 8 list which is a byte array so uh, yeah this was an idea you can uh, have it the problem is happened when you uh, have a lot of images so suppose that uh, with 10 images you can keep the raw data into the, the memory then you can show them so suppose that you have an infinite list of uh, images this way you consume a lot of memory to keep all of your images raw data suppose that you need to keep 1000 images in the memory so you cannot use this approach in a large app or in the production that you have an indefinite amount of images and yeah, after that, I was curious about the image.file function. So as you know, you can uh, use image.file. So you pass a file and it shows it as a widget. I started to uh, reading the details of this function or factory constructor. And I realized that it is using uh, image provider. So image provider is something li like that it has a function load async and uh, you are responsible to load the data of the image and return it so it is an async function and the default file image or uh, image file provider that flutter has 
uh, it uses this code so it uh, reads the bytes of the file and it does something else with that uh, we don't need to do anything with the other parts so I just commented this code and instead of this part I read the encrypted bytes so our file is encrypted and I just call the decrypt function which is a logic or an algorithm that decrypts the image and I passed my key and as a result here we have a clean bytes of the image so it is the raw data and the other parts uh, runs normally so we don't touch any part of any other part of the uh, flutter engine or uh, image provider we just touch the line that loads the data of a file and instead of uh, treating as a normal file we decrypt the encrypted bytes and so as a result in the app we can use an image a simple image and inside the image property you are supposed to pass image provider so here we passed our encrypted file image with the file or you can use it in the decoration image so if you have a container or a box decoration you can use encrypted file image and yeah that's it i just wanted to let you know about the idea so this way if you have uh, 10,000 of images so you can uh, scroll and load the images show them and uh, if flutter needs to recycle them it does it uh, under the hood i mean it doesn't keep all the data so if your image is too far from the part that user is seeing flutter somehow disposes the data and loads them again when you back to the part that it is disposed and yeah so this was the idea let's get back to the home page and yeah this is the last ui challenge it was a color switch game in my youtube if you haven't uh, watched the videos you can watch them here so we have eight episodes or nine i think and i explained how can you build a color switch game step by step so i explained the concepts and also i implemented the features of the game so yeah that's it after that we will have some ui challenges uh, ui challenge 10 is the next one which we try to implement it from 0 to 100 in this channel and in the video so we code together uh, to implement the ui challenge so stay tuned and see you next time. Bye.